cantankerous balls of shit. Me and Chauncey are here to tell you about the new Deep Fat Fried meetup in New Orleans on September 6th, right Chauncey? That's right, and it's gonna be September 6th. If you get a VIP ticket, you get free booze, and you also get free, um, no, just, just free booze. And uh, you get to come in an hour early and hang out with us before the big stage spectacle. And after the big stage spectacle, we'll hang out with everybody, so don't worry. And you know, you can take pictures and you can fucking, uh, you know, whatever the hell else happens. You can talk to us and shit, I don't know. I'll be drunk. You know, which, that's not, is that unusual? I don't know. Is it? Who knows? Who fucking even knows anymore? I don't know. Anyway, that's gonna happen, and uh, also, uh, support us on Patreon by becoming a patron, and uh, you get stuff. You get more videos than the non-patron people do, and they're good stuff, too. It's like, you know, good things. I don't know. Right? Yeah, so there you go, and, uh, you know, from me and Chauncey, you know, we, we love you, and, uh, and that's it. Come a patron and come to our meetup. And, uh, you know, get drunk with us. Drunk. Welcome to Deep Fat Fried, Ooh. here in a new studio for Ooh. the first time ever. Uh, and, uh, Ooh. You know, we're uh, this is a temporary studio setup. I don't want to get too much into it, but uh, we got about four times as much space here now that we had before. So we're going to be doing some new, interesting stuff with this. But this is kind of a temporary version of that. And uh, yeah, so you'll be seeing some big change coming to the show. We got some new equipment coming in, thanks to the support of our patrons. If you're not a patron, please consider it because we do uh, use it to upgrade the we, show. We got a bunch of huge, huge upgrades coming oh your God. way. You guys are going to be blown away. Blown the Especially fuck away. those of you that are big fans of dank d and I don't want to tease too much because we still are kind of a little ways off, but I just had, a, I got to mention it. You dank d and fans are going to be fucking crazed when you see crazed. the shit that we've got for you. You're going to be mad. fucking insane. Mad and, uh, with fucking insanity. General upgrades all across the board in yeah. the pike. Yeah, new studio. Things are fresh, dude. Oh, it's Things be feel sexy. fresh for the show. Oh, it's gonna be sexy. I'm gonna cut myself. I'm gonna cut myself because it sounds so good. Ah! Yes, yes. I think I need to go to the hospital, guys. Oh shit. Okay, dude. well just go then. All you right. fucking idiot. Uh, no self harm is allowed on YouTube. You TJ. dumb fuck. What, what do you think we're gonna fuck? drive you? It's not real. It's not real. I didn't do it. I didn't do it for real. It's fake. You know what, you did Don't ban me, YouTube. You need to put a trigger warning in there, dude. Trigger warning, y'all. Trigger warning. Self harm. Trigger warning. I just did a self harm. TJ, there's many. Oops. That's not a joke, TJ. It's not the rules. It's not a fucking joke, buddy. Is it okay to harm others? No. What? Oh, okay. What? I'm just I mean, asking the rules. Consensually, yes, it's fine. TJ, but I mean, it's not right on YouTube. There's ru go read the rules of YouTube, TJ. They're uh, all very clear. Clear as day. Uh, I don't know. No ambiguity. I'm pretty sure on YouTube it's 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 expressly obvious that you're not supposed to hurt people. Uh, so you might have fucked up big oops. time with this little tirade of yours. Oops, I did it again. This all might right. we might have to blur you. I'm gonna is that right? blur you, dude. So is all self harm wrong or just like cutting? All self harm. So like if on I wrap this cord around my my neck and like start just like. <laughs> TJ, you're, you're is that okay? You're to getting do? into TJ triggering people. Is that all right to do? He's that? triggering some people, and he's and he's, and he's wildly turning on some people at the same time. Ah. That's the fucked up thing about humanity. Yeah, good old humanity. Don't there you are some love people it? out there that have dreamed of the day. TJ. Oh my god, it finally happened! <laughs> well, TJ's gonna fucking. Well, TJ, you have a large enough fan base that someone's probably had a dream that you bang them, dude. Oh, you think, oh, yeah. you think that's going to happen? Have you ever been told to that DJ? someone had a dream about you where you banged them? Yep. Really? Okay, because I, I, you know what I always hear about is Marilyn Manson. I always hear, like, you know, like, like I, I'll, I'll like, talk to people online, like, you know what? I'm not gay or nothing, dude, but, like, I would fuck Marilyn Manson. Even, man. like, in these, ha in, even in, like, my has-been like, days, okay. I still get people writing me, like, dude, you are the new George Carlin. <laughs> you are the new Marilyn Manson. <laughs> I was, all I the people that you idolize, I idolize you to the same you're, you're degree. I don't want, like, I don't mean to be salty about it, but why don't, why doesn't anybody compare me to anybody cool? 
I always get like, you're Gwildor. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude, that sucks. Maybe you're just inimitable, Paul. Maybe there's not. Cool. Maybe there's just, you're just, you're not the next anything. You're well, just the first Well, thanks for helping me Paul's find a ego. positive spin on the horrible truth of my life. <laughs> there you go. That's you know? awesome. But you know what? There has been a lot of characters that have looked like you, Paul. Like Paul Aesthetically, Lavoir. there's lots of Pauls. But I don't yeah. know if performance-wise, there's a shit ton of Pauls Oh, dude, out no, there. no, no. I'm Kratos from the new God of War. Yeah, you are. Yeah. That's a pretty good one I'm right every there. dude that ever has a beard. I'm John Goodman. I'm, um, hmm. Well, who else do I get? I'm Dr. Robotnik. Yeah, you're definitely Dr. Robotnik. I mean, yeah, that, that one, Man. that one, I, ooh, I have to say. It's More than Jim Carrey, for sure. Yeah, I mean, when he's done up, like, I've seen Jim Carrey in the, I guess, after Robotnik becomes Robotnik form, and he looks way better. Have you seen uh, that? No. Mm -mm. You should look at that. Okay. Tell me what you think about it. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, you yeah, want to look that yeah. now? I'll do it I now. mean, you can if you want. Yeah, it's, the mean, banter, I'm, it's the banter part of the episode. Yeah, dude. I'm curious to see if, like, it, once he goes full Robotnik or, uh, what, what do you call him, Eggman, you said? Eggman, mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, Eggman, uh... Man, fuck that. He's Robotnik I'm not, to me. Uh, he's always going to be Robotnik to me, but I mention it because I just... The ocean of people in the yeah. comments. Hey. Actually, his canon name is, is is Eggman. It was changed for the U.S. market. I'm Which, like, well, I'm well, in whatever. the fucking U.S. Yeah, market, you I'm son the of U.S. Bitch. market. So to me, it's fucking Dr. Robotnik, and you can suck my dick. So yeah, that's him at the end of the uh, All right, so yeah, scroll trailer, through some of these, because there's some better frames of this that look a little more Robotnik. Like, when you can see his full stash. See that? Like, like the only thing, the, my only criticism of it is he's that he's a scrawny little man. Yeah, he's not fat. He's fat, dude. Yeah, where's the part where he gets fat? I mean, look at this. You know, like look at Robotnik. Robotnik is a big old fucking fat chode of a man. Fuck yeah, he is. And dude. Jim Carrey didn't look anything like him. Like now, now I'm I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but I think that Hollywood missed a fucking huge opportunity to cast a guy like I, dude. If you put one at like. Tricked out my mustache a little bit and shaved me up. Put the goggles on my ass. Let my double chin kind of swing. Yeah. Put me in a skin tight red suit in the ball. Oh yeah. You know, driving around the dude. I'd fucking kill his Robotnik. I think you could do it, Paul. What voice would you use? Or you? I don't know. I'd have to work on it because you know. Yeah, that's a. What's your first? I know there was a cartoon, a but I never watched it. I never watched. Robotnik it. had a badass voice in one of the cartoons. Yeah, see, At I least. knew that I never watched the cartoons. I only played the games, and in the games that I played, Robotnik never spoke. He was just like, "Let me find a clip really quick of that before we uh, get into our actual subject matter." Yeah, I'm just trying to get this tape that I put on my fingers off because I'm tape tape, tape tape finger. It's a rape finger. Here, get this tape away from me. <laughs> what is wrong? I can't with handle you, the responsibility. <laughs> T if you put anything that he can play with within it's true. You know, reach of TJ, he's going to do it. It's very true. Dude, the, Sonic, the Sonic games are those games I always played, but never got past me to the third or fourth stage. Oh, I got the Sonic games. That. Yeah, except, well, I, I was like fucking... Maybe oh, you were, yeah, you were like a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. six or something. Yeah, how long has it been since you actually played a Sonic game? Ooh, I think it's been like 20 years or something. No, I, I, I played, uh, I got like a Steam download I mean, maybe a couple years ago. Okay. I wasn't any good. Dude, I'm I'm still pretty decent, I think. I mean, it's been a few years, probably like eight or nine years, but I think I'd be pretty decent at Sonic One and Two and and Sonic CD because I played so much of those fucking All right. games. Like Fair I enough. literally lived on those games when I was a kid. Every time I've picked them up in recent memory, <laughs> it's been okay. So I think I could do okay. I think I could beat those games. All right, so this is uh, I'm gonna play a little bit of this Doctor Robotnik because he actually had a pretty cool voice on this All right, on let me this hear show. This shit. This was a. I think this was called Sonic Sat AM or some retarded. I've game. never even fucking heard of it. But uh, they had a pretty cool Robotnik voice. <laughs> it's showtime. Good morning, Doctor Robotnik. Exciting trip. Shut up, Snivelly. Before this day is done, you and the Power Rings will be right in the palm of my hand. See this like dark. This dark like deep grumbly shit I can I can only approach that shit I can't really do like a full voice performance of that kind of like when, well I mean you don't have to go when, all the way with that but when you the could... power rings are assembled you will be mine oh that sounds great does it yeah just go with that you got it <laughs> you nailed it right out of the gate Sonic the Hedgehog Dom you <laughs> I love it man fuck was this the first one where Sonic was obsessed with chili dogs? Is this, is no, this is a uh, this is a uh, this was actually on at the same time as the other one. 
I know you've defeated me in this the past. This was more like serious, quote unquote, uh, yeah, interpretation. Yeah, or whatever. That, that was a way better Sonic series. The first one, which is like, I like chili dogs. I'm Sonic. That was not that great. My new Mark 15 battle robot is undefeatable by the likes of you, pitiful hedgehog. Your speed will not avail you. You will never see coming the rocket fists of Mark 15. Whoop! Ah! Sonic, you've done it again! <laughs> I must run! Retreat to my lair to build yet another Mark 15 robot. Remind me to get you another shock mount, Paul, because... Uh, yeah, mine, mine, mine is fucked. fucked. It, got, it's it fucked. got ganked. Yeah, it. it's okay. It'll work. It's right. keeping my shit suspended, so... It kind of just bobs like a wiener, and you know Woo. what I mean? It's like very bobby. Sorry if it's turning you on or anything. <laughs> <laughs> now it, now it kind of is. All right, well, let's get into the, uh, the subject of the day. Okay. Well, we actually have two subjects, but we're going to start by talking about uh, feeders. Feeders. Feeders? Say, feeders. What is a feeder, TJ? Uh, feederism mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is a sexual <sighs> fetish. Oh, my goodness. In the same wheelhouse as the uh, chubby chaser, you know? Ooh. The chubby chaser? Yeah, you know the chubby chaser. Like, you know, dudes or oh, women yeah. who prefer their uh, partners the chunky side. to be a chunk. You see a lot of those guys. delicious fat fuck. You see a lot of those guys in Louisiana. Really skinny dude. And big old fat woman. You see it the Bare other way around sometimes, though, woman. too. Dude, yep. I've oh, seen yeah, it's some, like, but guys, know, hot little tight-ass chicks walking around with, like, Big old blubba gumptious dude. Uh, That's my girlfriend. Wonder, wonder why you uh, dudes that have you the Dunlap. That, Paul. Dude, dudes that have the Dunlap. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. It's the sexual thrill. That belly one, Dunlapped over that dick. Dude. Oh damn! It's the sexual thrill one can apparently get from being over. This is feederism we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Not chubby chasers anymore. It's the sexual thrill one can apparently get from being overfed or doing the overfeeding. Now, someone who likes to be fed. Is called a feedy. Uh huh. The person who's a uh, person who gets aroused by uh, doing the feeding is called a feeder. Okay. So that's how that works. I see. Oh, God, you understand now, Paul? Uh huh. Feed me. So here's an example. This is a uh, this is a chick being fed. I think it's, was that a hot dog of some kind or something? <laughs> it looks like a bacon hot dog. Yes. Cool. Maybe maybe just a hot dog bun, but filled only with bacon. So feederism is a paraphilia, which is a term that means having an unusual or uncommon sexual interest. Now, surprisingly high number of people have actually fantasized about this at one point. So, uh, respondents, there was about a, a survey that uh, had about 4,000 plus respondents. Um, 13 to 19% of participants in the survey reported having fantasized about this fetish before. Okay. With heterosexual women being the least likely to have done so at about 13%, and gay men being the most likely at 19%. Wait, wait, wait. So there, it's way more likely than for this type of relationship to be two dudes? Not necessarily, because only about 2% of any gender or sexuality group said they have feeder fantasies often. Okay, so it's just so, so stratified that every even finding one of them is rare. Right. So the combinations are all rare. So while there's a lot of people who have had a fantasy about it at some point, there's not very many people who have it as their default. Like, it's this is their main now, thing. Now, is this a worldwide thing, or is this primarily located in the U.S.? I don't know that. I would imagine that it's worldwide. I could see Germans being into this. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's more I than a I guess. I send the chocolate. Yeah. More bratwurst. Mm, I love how fat you're getting. Yeah. Eat the Wiener schnitzel. Mm, your ass is getting so blubber gumptious. Yeah. Eat another uh, ja, ja. Eat another English muffin smeared with butter. So, uh, if only about 2% of people, or 2% or less, uh -huh. of any particular group uh, actually have this as their main thing. So you can imagine how few of those are actually even living the lifestyle. Dude, this is, this right. is the American so this is fucking... very, very right. few people actually living this as their, you know, kind of thing. You know, there's people who fantasize about it a lot, maybe, but not many, and even less that actually are living it. So it's not a common thing. You know what, you. though? These people, and I think you have to admit this, CJ, these people are living the American fucking dream. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, look at this woman. Does she look discontent to you? She What's has a fucking plate of bacon. She has a plate of either English muffins or bagels smothered in butter 
and fucking f a full fat fucking cream cheese. Then for dessert, she had a Kit Kat. Looks like another uh, another. And look snack. at that giant glass of and chocolate milk. And a fucking milk, half dude. gallon of chocolate milk. Oh, there's Nesquik. It's Nesquik. Yep. There's the bottle. She's gonna fucking polish off that whole bottle. I mean, look. She's a fucking perfect consumer. She's gonna eat, eat until she just is dead. She's just a fat fucking lump of shit on a fucking bed somewhere, and this guy is gonna be fucking jerking off the whole time. I'm like, oh, this is great. Well, actually, some of them, uh, I didn't really pull anything about it, but in my research, I did find that some people are into this fetish to the point of actually fetishizing the unhealthy side effects of it. Oh, for sure. Like, they get to the point of like, yeah, I got diabetes now. This is awesome, you know? And it's like, yeah, eat myself to death. I want my lifespan to be as short as possible. Well, have you ever seen the, the show, uh, My 600-Pound Life? No. Ever heard of it? Okay, well, the show I've that, heard of it. Well, it's basically supposed to help people these, who are obviously super obese lose weight. Right. But often what you find with these people is that they have to have enablers at a certain point because they can't really walk around. Like, she's not to that point. But if she's like 600 pounds, say, in a fucking two or three years, this guy will be doing everything for her. Like you need to go to the bathroom. Let me help you. I'm about to like I'm about to wipe the shit from your ass, literally. And then she's completely dependent on him too. Yes, of course. It's like it's like a submissive thing as well. Oh, yes. All right. Um. So where do these fantasies come from? Where do they come from, y'all? Um. I'm, Fantasy land. I'm dude. guessing in the same way that like foot fetish folks are kind of crosswired to associate feet with sexual organs and shit. Maybe people are crosswired in a way that makes them Maybe. look at like the act of eating or the act of feeding someone or eating or getting fatter or all three at the same time. You know, yeah, maybe. Maybe it's a made child, an association. What do you child, think, Scotty? Uh, it could be like they they theorize, theorize at least a lot of sexual fetishes have some childhood moment that you know something happened where they started you know wanting to be fed or wanting to feed somebody, make someone mm. healthy and fat or whatever. Well, let's take a look at some of the the uh, material these gentlemen. Are looking at this is actually on YouTube. Oh my god! So this oh, is called. Oh come on, TJ, we can't get away with this. We can get away. Oh with my it. goodness! This is called Fat Feedy. Can't fit into her jeans wow. anymore. Can't fit them jeans. She's trying to get them jeans on. Can they fit? You can't see nothing. Everything's covered. They can't. Ostensibly, they, they can't fit. I mean, covered. Yes, <laughs> sort of. They, they don't fit. Do they can't fit? fit them jeans no more. Gonna have to go oh, size no. up and maybe two. No. But the real entertainment comes... Uh, she tr struggles to get them on. She can't. Of course she can't. Uh, but the real That's fun is in the small. comments section, though. Plump and round is the best way to describe you. Hope you continue your joy of gaining. Oh, boy. Uh, you're very sexy looking, but I think yoga pants would be much <laughs> butter if they stretch. <laughs> oh, butter. boy. Oh. Okay. Uh, oh, my God, you look amazing. I love how much you've grown. Keep it up. That's Damn. some thirsty fucks in this shit. I would pay you to devour me. I'd be really filling. Lol. A little bit of a vor guy going on hey, there. Nothing wrong with that. It's been a pleasure to see you struggle. More brawless. Love you. Thank you. If you need any support, let us know or me know, and we <laughs> slash me can help feed you. This dude is really fishing. He's hoping Aww. that she hits up Tyler Tyler for a sugar Please, daddy let or me something. Feed you. I love this. There's nothing better than a girl with a gut. Heart, ring, heart, heart, Wow, heart, dude, he wants to put a lock, ring on it? 100%. Damn, that guy is real excited. The and hottest other lady on YouTube. Too. More videos, more, more, more. So, so this is um, not as uncommon a fetish as it may seem. 27,000 people are watching this, and they all love it. Right. Uh, they love it. Chubby Cat 666. So maybe this is like less common as a fetish. Like more common as a fetish, but way less common as people that are actually going to meet up and start living. Oh, yeah. The I'm going to stuff bacon, hot dogs, and buttery waffles down So, your anyway, I um, thought you guys might enjoy that little detour, but let's, add, let's go back that to That was the, a detour? Yeah, let's enjoy the little question you guys I asked you was where does these fantasies come from? Okay. I just thought maybe it'd be good to look at an example sure. of the kind of people that are into it. Or at least as much as you can glean from YouTube comments. I mean, hey, there's a lot of psychology playing out in the YouTube comments. There obviously is. Um, so uh, here's a uh, Carl's Jr. ad. Oh, my goodness. What the you remember this Carl's Jr. ad? I remember uh, maybe not this the one specifically, right but there was a, a whole slew of these in the early 2000s. You, you remember them? Yes. And they were just like sex. Each one was sexier than the last. Like It was like they were trying to push the envelope for how much... 
sexiness sexy they could put they in a burger ad, basically. And make it dude, a that fucking yeah. Carl's Jr. bat looks like it's like about to go in her pussy, dude. That's fucking. This is like the most. No, sexual dude, it look thing. like if that if that star is He's on the smiling. upper reverse side of that bag, he is face first. In She's that literally pussy. pulling her skirt up, and the only thing obstructing her her uh, pussy is that Carl's Damn. the Carl's Jr. star is going to town on that. He bag. is the star right here, man. So, and you notice uh, what is she? What she's doing here is really eroticizing that food. Oh, it's so good. Well, yeah, you're de- she's definitely inviting an association between a yes. big juicy burger and a big juicy pussy. Well, uh, there's a few different theories as to what causes feederism. Now, some have argued that feederism is an exaggeration of the fact that we tend to find food and eating mildly arousing to begin with. As evidence of this, consider a study in which people who weren't into feederism reported on their sexual arousal while looking at and listening to sexual, neutral, and feeding stimuli. What researchers found was that feeding stimuli were rated as more arousing than neutral stimuli, although not as arousing as sexual stimuli. So basically, human beings inherently are slightly sexually aroused by food anyway. Wow. But just on a very, like, a mild level. I guess that makes sense. If someone eats something, it's like really, it's like, mm, oh my God, so you eat, fucking Yeah, you can good. even hear the noises. People make, mmm, oh yeah, that's fucking delicious. You can kind of hear that, like, oh, that's like, that's tickling some kind of little thing deep down inside somewhere that mm-hmm. is kind of on the same wavelength oh, as dude. your sexual All you gotta response. I got to hear Paul make that noise and order a mm-hmm. fucking pizza. Mm hmm. Because, Ben, Paul, I know you mm-hmm. love some fucking pizza, dude. Uh, I, love, I love a hamburger, too, though. That hamburger that she's got, no joke. It looks Fuck like it's yeah, got, dude. It looks like it's got jalapenos on it. It looks like the jalapeno ranch uh, uh, onion straw monstrosity <laughs> that they had for a while. I so love One of my favorite episodes of The Simpsons. Great episode. Uh, all the early Treehouse of Horror episodes are great. Um, more, more. So, in the same survey that I referenced uh, a bit earlier, the 4,000-plus people survey, people who fantasize about being feeders reported that their partners in the uh, sexual fantasies tended to weigh more. So, basically, they were already into fatness to begin with. Okay. That's interesting, because I always wondered if they like some of these chicks that you see that are in these feeder relationships started as like healthy weight. A lot of them dudes, did. like, built them yes, up. Yes. Oh, happens. really? That, yeah. that, oh, okay. So uh, it, we'll actually look at uh, a case of that in a in a in just a second here. So it's like um, they, they like to be responsible for making them fat, too. So, yeah, and uh, it kind of supports the idea that they're, they're – so they're attracted to fatness in general. Now, second, right, sure. those who fantasize about being feeders reported more BDSM fantasies in general. So there's a sadistic element to it as you're, like, feeding someone to the point of it actually hurting them. There's a bondage element to it, as some of these people are, like, restrained during feedings, and, or there's funnels and things Whoa, used and stuff like damn. that. Uh, it all, so it ties into a lot of other desires. Sure. So, uh, some I, that we might talk about a little later. Yes. Uh, so as you were, guys were talking about, um, you know, sometimes or this, this girl here, uh, this is a bar a feeder TV video from, uh, from um, uh, 2013, I believe. Yeah, 2013. Okay. And hopefully, I don't think we'll watch the whole thing, but you can, well, you can check take out a little gander pieces here. here. So here's Tell this woman. And this, well, is, this the is the same, same woman, woman from the picture. Yeah. This is actually oh, the same exactly. photo. So yeah, they're like buttery waffles. They're egos. I weigh myself every morning to see how much I'm going to eat throughout the day, how much I need to take in, making sure I didn't lose any weight. Um, and I weigh myself at night to see the work that I did and be proud of myself. Yes. Is she, so, do they, oh, so they blended up some ice cream so she, they can be funneled to her. Yes. I mean, I guess wow. at least they're efficient. So it. she's putting real effort into this whole getting she fat She really thing. is. So I wanted to show uh, a interview with her friend who's going to talk about, like, <laughs> well, you'll see. Hi. When Tammy some told me she was doing it on purpose... I kind of freaked out and got very upset and scared for, I want her to be able to be here for a long time. Well, she ain't going to be, so. <laughs> so she's basically I mean, like, you know, like, why would you're doing this intentionally? This see, is dude, like, I got to be honest you know, with you. My, my range of attraction to the female body is pretty, pretty robust. Pretty, right? Yeah, it's pretty wide. Yeah. And so it's like. This chick looks pretty damn good to me. Right. Compared to some other 
chick's probably her size. I think she wears it pretty well. Well, I don't want to show too much of this because I don't know Barcroft TV or how much they're protective, but I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at these comments. Oh, God. So, like, see, we saw the comments of the people who were into this before. Let's see the comments of a general audience who just stumbles <laughs> okay, upon this. got it, yeah, because this is a wider audience. Girl, for this too. those aren't curves. Those are fat rolls. 1,000 upvotes. Damn. The sad thing is, her body doesn't look like it should be really fat. Is there bodies that are supposed to be really fat? Yeah, I guess there's some people that just look like they're supposed to be real fat. Uh, like, she has a good structure. I bet if she worked at it a little, she could eat. She could look stunning. So this guy is feeling the fucking, you know. He, Damn, what a waste of a potentially good pussy, man. Yeah. Too bad she got all fat and But he stuff. doesn't want to, like, admit that she, you know, he's actually attracted to her at this weight. So he's like, yeah, I think she could be stunning, you know, if she put in a little work. It's like, come on. Just just say that if this chick fucking knocked on Trusky Blue's door and was like, can I suck your dick? You'd be like, oh, right away, ma'am. <laughs> you wouldn't be like, no, you're a little too thick. Her boyfriend should be charged with some type of crime. It's a sick fetish these men have. Oh, yeah, because she looks totally unwilling <laughs> yeah. as a participant in this. She's involved in you this. You saw him punching be- her and threatening her. Women, actually, at this point, have agency, so... No, they don't. I mean, she's No, actually, lying. they don't, TJ. Oh, they don't? I'm no, sorry. no, no, they don't. Because, because of hardcore uh, radical feminism, women don't... You can't make an argument... You can't be a rad feminist and make an argument that women have agency. Well, I'm not a rad feminist, so I can still make the agency argument. Okay. A uh, girl just well, I deny your you. I, den- I deny you just based on who oh, you are, okay. TJ. Cool. It's sad uh, because she's really pretty and she's basically killing herself. Okay, well, fair enough. Killing me softly with drumsticks. That butt crack has got to be <laughs> super nasty. This is ridiculously <laughs> sick. Notice now this is a chick. Now, I want, I want you to know that there's probably salt behind this in some way because Bethany Grimes probably sees that, like, this chick is big, but she's pulling it off okay. And so she wants to act like that every fat person's ass crack has just got to be gross. This person doesn't even care about her body. She's like, her house is filthy, the kitchen floor. I didn't say it, but if it was nasty, it was nasty, whatever. When her best friend cried for Jesus, Kelly, everyone's concerned for your life except you and your fetishist boyfriend. What? Who cares about your fucking concern for her life? It's her life. Why is she supposed to live under the constant pressure of the concern of Rye Road from YouTube and 34 other fucking blithe retards? Fuck you. I hate this idea that we need, everybody in the world needs your fucking concern. You think this big bitch does, hasn't heard a million fucking times in her life that she needs to lose weight? That it's unhealthy to be fat. Well, that she should her- eat bacon hot dogs and butter covered <laughs> waffles every day and blend up two gallons of ice cream and drink it every day and weigh herself and reward herself. That you think she doesn't know she shouldn't? It's obvious. <laughs> it's completely it's obvious. It's because she shouldn't. You people feed these people's fetish by making it dirty and wrong because they're just like, ooh, that's what I'm into. I shouldn't eat all this fucking bacon today, but I'm going to, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know you shouldn't be eating it too, baby, but I'm going to feed it to you, honey. Oh, yeah, it's so dirty. Everybody thinks it's so wrong. They tell me how fat I'm getting. Oh, baby, I love it. I love how fat you're You know what? You think you're helping her by going, ew. Look at this. How fat you're getting. She loves that. She's yeah. proud of this. She's completely proud of she's what she's doing. She's piping a gallon of fucking ice cream. Yeah, she three looks three happy. Times a day. <laughs> you think you're gonna shame her out of this, you dumb fucks? Uh, so you might want to know where she is today. Uh, I know I did. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't. Uh, it seems like she's retired from life as a public figure. Or um, I, my other theory is that maybe she got so fat that she swallowed the universe, and we all exist <laughs> within her now. <laughs> that's possible. The belly maybe of the that's beast. why. Maybe that's why I have a. Uh, you know, like I'm, I feel defensive of her. Because I'm, you know, it's the universe that oh, we're yeah, in. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're now in her gut. She, so he, somehow this tall, lanky motherfucker that found this chick piped our asses down that funnel. I don't think that you're being, I don't, I don't think you're wrong to be defensive of her. I mean, you can, I mean, I don't agree with her lifestyle, but it's not my decision to make. She has, auto- no. she has the autonomy to make that decision. I think they both fully understand that this is not a healthy lifestyle, but this is the lifestyle they've, cho- uh, they've chosen to pursue. And they're obviously happy with it. They went on a fucking TV show or allowed themselves to be interviewed. So I mean, here's what's the big, what's the, really, what's the big deal with them doing it? I mean, here's look, look. the hypocrisy of people being freaked out by this. There are plenty of fat motherfuckers, way fatter than her. Yeah. yeah. Walking around Walmart that are doing that shit to themselves every day. 
literally funneling Not ice even cream and to, pork chops yeah, yeah. and everything they can fucking uh, all the bacon they can eat you know 24 7 and just getting fatter and fatter and yeah, fatter and nobody 100%. gives a fuck about that sounds like no, me <laughs> there's no bleeding hearts or concern out there for for that no it's this person that gets off on it people hate when people get off on shit it's puritanical why well yeah the puritans are always here dude they're, I mean, they're it, back it, it, in a it, big it, way too Oh, dude, they never left, man. They're always, even if they, it seems like, like, you know, in the 90s, they got the gut punch, like, oh, everything's edgy. Now it's like, hey, we're back, bitches. No, they've, they've come back. It, like, they just come back strong. You know, they're back in a big way on roll. both, on both sides. How they roll, know, it's how roll, the roll. Spectrum. All right, so, um, I went to, um, I went to, uh, go, f- um, I wanted to find some communities, you know, of these people. So I found, first thing I found was, uh, these people. Reddit's these, yeah, what is these people? Feeders and feedies. They're not humans now? Yeah, I guess. I said people. These objects. Uh, so first I went fellow to... Fellow humans. Yeah, all right. So my fe- I found the, my fellow humans. Anyway, <laughs> fuck you guys. Well, uh, so I went to Reddit's no, the, the, R feederism. I'll, 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 yes? I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but this I will say this. You want to call a group, uh, describe a group of people. I've heard a lot of SJWs and other people say, you say folks. Folks, okay. Folks. Okay, so these folks I found... I hate the word folks. Um... So I went to Reddit's R feederism, which is a not safe for work subreddit. So don't visit that mm-hmm. unless you're, you know, you want. That's what you want. Don't uh, visit that. Why? Yeah, why not? I mean, just don't visit at work. Where the top post of all time. I, I, this top post is kind of surprising to me. So okay. I'm going to show you. All right. Let's take a look. Uh, it was surprising to me because she's really not very fat. Yeah. See, this chick is not fat in my estimation. This chick has got some extra weight on her and shit. For she's sure. got enough of a little but belly she, to grab she does or not, whatever. But she does not escape. The uh, normal size orbit for me. You know she just what? looks thick. She's on a journey, though. So, but she wants to go up. I'm sure yeah. she's trying to gain. Yeah, I mean, like most of these women you see here are trying to gain weight or whatever. So she's probably trying to get past this. But this is the top post on that subreddit. So this is like obviously a lot of the dudes there. This is kind of what they're looking for. This this level. They're not really looking Already for like Already kind of just started to get a little chunky yeah, and I willing mean, to fucking I'm not saying there aren't dudes out there looking for the giant glutton. I mean, obviously, we've seen. Well, you but, know what they... But, but I think they want to be involved in the whole process. They don't want to... You know, she's already fat. That's probably one thing. They're like, okay, that's nice. But they want to be the one making them fat. Right. They don't want to just simply to have someone who's fat. They want to be involved. Like, I'm sure once they become fat, they're thrilled. But that's because they knew they did it. So um, I actually found out that our feederism is not the most popular... Oh. Of the subreddits devoted to this, though. There's actually R Stuffers, which is also not safe for work. <laughs> stuffers. So stuffers. I went and found their top post of all time. Okay. What's theirs? And uh, also. Not, oh. But not you a, can see some progress, though. Not a hugely fat girl, though. Or is Maybe. this. Or is she just pushing her belly out? I think she's just out. pushing her yeah, belly out it. versus yeah. sucking it in. Maybe. Oh, okay. Got you. I, I, I thought this might have been like a. I don't think this is a before and after or anything. I think this is just different poses. Okay. But, uh, you know, also, but just once again, like, you know, she's got a belly. Yeah, a she's A little thick, bit, though. but she, this is not some hugely fat, no. morbidly obese woman. Now, there are pictures like that on those, but the top pictures in both of those subreddits. Seem to be these kind of, like, uh, uh, thick. thick yeah. But I, cause, cause that, that's what I think of. I think she's thick. She's not, like, fucking fat. This is not a fat chick. So uh, She does not rise to that no, level. No, yeah, not at all. Um, you know, whatever. She's a, I mean, I, I some dudes, as, it's kind of like a thing where, you know, like it's kind of an, in the eye of the beholder. Like some dudes are going to look at this. Dude, oh, my gosh. She's so fat. Right. So fat. So fat. I would I'd say she's probably classified as overweight. I mean, yeah, I, I would say maybe she's not, she's not obese. I'd say chubby. Whatever. That point. Um, chubby. So um, I started to uh, think that may, most of the people with this feeder fetish are not really attracted to gigantic obesity. Mm-hmm. Now, some are. But what's really more popular in the community is, like, this chubbiness or this mild fatness. But maybe it's, like Scotty said, they just see that as, like, oh, I want to push it to that limit. You know, they need something that's, like, kind of, they're not super fat yet, but when they get with me and I start feeding them, then they're going to then they're gonna get balloon fat. And that's, like, oh, yeah, then I'll have my, you know, totally dependent on me fat girl around that, you know, can't move right. on her own and all that stuff, so... Feed me 16 Eggo waffles, baby. But I don't know. Um, so, But then I was like, wasn't there supposed to be a bunch of gay dudes into this? Because both these subreddits are like, no male fat people, no fat men. <laughs> we only into fat so chicks no, here. there's nowhere for gay uh, 
feeder guys. Well, I actually did. I dudes. found uh, yet gay another stuffers or something. Yeah, it was uh, our stuffers mail. Another NSFW. One. Oh, okay. Well, they're just trying to keep shit. You know. And, uh, so I found the top post over there, and here, here it is. <laughs> Whoa! Ah! Now he's he's pretty fat, <laughs> but he looks uh, pretty happy too. Yeah, he's pretty happy. Yeah, he looks pretty happy. He's pretty got, happy uh, but know, he's pretty fat. They got lower standards over there, it seems. They do have low standards uh, over no, there. I mean, this, this guy's not even naked, dude. Well, I'll show you the actual number one post. Okay. So this is it. Oh, shit. Yeah. Damn, dude. That's a big belly. I find it pretty funny that I can get away with uh, these tits on YouTube, even though they look... It's exactly the same structure as a female titty at this point. <laughs> kind of is. But for some reason, that's okay. But if I showed a uh, well, female titty... Only, only because there's a little beard in the shot. Yeah. If there was no beard in the shot, if this was just head, like neck down or some shit, you might get busted. What did for this, this fucking dude eat to get six pounds? <laughs> that's that's just... empty. This is empty belly versus full belly. So yeah. this is he's just showing off that he ate, you know, six pounds worth of food in whatever one sitting he did this in. That's fucking nuts, dude. And you can even see that it's you know distended further. Yeah, of course, six, he could just be lying. He could just shit. be sucking it in in one and pushing it out in the other. Maybe, knows. but man, it. it but just at that looks, size, uh, I don't even I, know how much I pushing out, dude, does. I don't have to even fucking doubt that. He's got a fucking bulbous fucking... It's like, it's, like, it's like a fucking giant egg in his belly, dude. It's fucking nuts. Yeah, that's a big old bell. Oh, yeah. That's a big fat bell. Oh, that's yeah. That's like disturbing, dude. dude. I almost feel like it's like fucking like... It's like sentient. Like the, uh, the nipples are the eyes, dude, and then the rest of it's it just is. Like, it does have a segmento countenance to it. Damn, dude. It would dude, definitely what the fuck? be its own character for sure. That's self-aware. If we knew this person. Mm. Oh, yeah. It looks like he shaves, too. Like, he's shaving the whole works up on the chest and shit. Because those are just, like, remarkably hairless tits. So? Is that, is, is, are you sure this is, are you sure this is safe for work, TJ? It's, this is not. I mean, well, the subreddit isn't, the, the subreddit isn't. This picture, I guess, is. Oh, okay, good. I mean, <laughs> I personally don't see why. It seems like there's a weird double standard as far as like what titties are allowed to be shown, right. but well, that's exi- whatever. That's, that's existed for a long time. <laughs> that's not. I didn't create that. Um, so I'm starting to realize that I didn't pull as much research for this as I thought I did. So we're gonna do an old standby gag here. You ready for the old standby gag? This uh, is uh, this is the one where I read some uh, feeder fiction. Uh huh. While stuffing my face full of donuts. Oh, you love this gag, TJ. Yeah, because I get to I eat donuts. I can see why you did this one. Yeah, I get to eat donuts. Is this you process. coming out as a feeder too? Are yeah. Are you just admitting that? Well, this, this is, is just your me. Uh, like you know, if if nineteen uh, percent of people, I think, or something like that, are fantasize, interested. Yeah. You know, something right. So well, up to nineteen percent of people. Yeah. So I mean, like, obviously, why not do something for them? You know, why not right. give them a little show? Why not? Plus, I'm going to read some erotic fiction. But, Ooh, uh, titillating. You got. I'll I'll start eating at a. I'm not gonna eat at the very beginning. Let's let's get a little into the story okay. first. Let me put on my shade so I can hide the lust in my eyes. Yeah, try to this. do that. She wakes up at half past two in the afternoon, screaming to be fed breakfast. Ooh. She'd spent the better part of the night in a feeding binge and hadn't fallen asleep till just after three a.m. Her binge probably would have lasted longer, but all the fast food and pizza places were closed by then. She produced so much garbage from her binge that I nearly filled our dumpster to over full. If her eating binges keep up like this, we'll have to increase dumpster sizes again. Luckily, they'd always come for the daily emptying of it because she'll be most likely to do it again today. But where was I? Ah, yes, breakfast. I quickly filled one of the Scotty, dessert Scotty, what are you doing under the table there? Oh, nothing, man. Nothing. What are you With doing under the table there? Nothing, man. And wheel it towards her room. She is screaming at the top of her lungs about how hungry she is and calling me all sorts of names for starving her to death. What kind of names? I don't know. Specifically, Uh, like, what are you, uh... This writer should have added some names. Yeah, man, uh... This is how she normally wakes up in the morning. I put morning in quotes because she rarely wakes up before noon and sleeps at least 14 hours a day. Scotty, what the fuck, man? Oh, oh, well, man, I'm just... This is so unprofessional. The rest is spent lying lying in her specially reinforced custom ultra-wide king-size bed, which she hasn't been out of for five years, eating and watching TV. I enter the room. There's a KFC commercial on TV, which is making her drool profusely. She sees me and immediately shouts... 
Well, it's about time. Her voluminous jowls and chin quiver and flap with anger. That makes me think of Jabba. <laughs> her face is beet red with anger. Is it Jabba the Hutt? I'm lying here starving to death. And you're out in the kitchen messing around, probably eating my food. <laughs> Get over here quick. I'm giving that grub. Oh, TJ, that's you you waited until right the fucking right moment. I to... do as I'm told. TJ's good at this. He is part of this fucking When it comes to food, come to food I take my baby very seriously. Oh man, you should watch watch that down with a yeah. pint of melted vanilla ice cream. Hey, so you got any chocolate milk? You can go fetch it. Yeah, go for me chocolate milk. Yeah, dude, you gotta fucking drink some. There's Ovaltine in my cabinet. Yeah, dude, we gotta fucking beat you, TJ. You gotta get healthy, man. Mm, yeah. You gotta get healthy. The pudgy little hands, you grab the first bite, it's like shoveling donuts into a mouth. Almost instantly making a big mess. Well. They look pretty tasty. I like those little hostess donuts. She moans and pleasures. She does this donut after donut, box out of box. She devours them like she hasn't eaten them for weeks. Ew. Every five minutes and a hundred donuts. She swallows all of them. Well, what's this? There it is, dummy. Now, you see how thick it is? Go get me another cart and fix me my breakfast. Then she goes on gorging like I'm not even there. Is it getting hot in here? Is it, is it just me? Is that I the, won! Did somebody turn the heat on? You're not a and prepare for breakfast. You know how late in the day she wakes up? She's always right in bed with. It's I'm fucking almost disgusting. I'm up and she yells me from the other room. There's another cart full of donuts. I bring them into her and tell her breakfast is almost ready. This is hideous. <laughs> <laughs> she grunts and just a mouthful of donuts That's well it's about time oh my god that is 90% Ovaltine and of course we got whole milk what the oh. fuck dude this guy show me that glass you have whole milk That's the Ovaltine <laughs> that's like an ounce of Ovaltine or more two ounces ten so, ounces wow Look at this here, TJ. Oh, do the milk is even penetrating all the Ovaltine? A the upper bit. portions the of bottom. her giant breast are, co- are each nearly covered by smeared donut goop. <laughs> and most of the top portion of her paunch as well. Her, paunch. her fat face is almost blotted oh. out with cream and goo as well. Her long blonde hair is matted with food particles. Wait not just from this morning's feast, but is from T- last night's as well. Scotty's a feedy and TJ's a feeder, dude. No, no, no. Scotty's a feeder. Here you go, yeah. TJ. He wants to see TJ pipe this fucking over. And her small down. girlish chin is dwarfed by a hanging sack of flabby chins and neck fat. What are you fucking taking so long with that damn Ovaltine? Get it over here. Make sure it's nice and sturdy. Enough! Give me the fucking Ovaltine, bitch. Jesus, look at you. What a fucking champion. <coughs> TJ just literally drank like a half <coughs> gallon of Ovaltine. <coughs> it was at least, you know, 30% Ovaltine. I used the most of his Ovaltine to make it. Her upper arms are, man- ah, whatever. It goes on. Well, there you go. I'm sure there's probably two or three people in the audience that are super happy about what just happened. And I gotta, I gotta be honest, DJ. You did a good job with it. You very much committed. You got through the material. Yep. Do you feel healthy now, TJ? Yeah, yeah how do I you feel, feel super healthy. You I'm feel still good? hungry though. Really? Yeah. Well, have a few more donuts then. I'm out. Oh, should have got more packs of donuts. Well, you need to find yourself a good feeder. You'd never be out of donuts. That's true. Yeah, it's, yeah. I gotta get Chelsea, Chelsea into this yeah. shit. Yeah. Feed me, Chelsea. I want Make an appeal to Chelsea and... right now to be a feeder because you want to eat donuts. Where do you your breakfast, TJ? Whole fucking box of Eggo waffles, done. Uh, two pounds of bacon, <coughs> everything loaded down with butter. I mean, bacon, extra butter, waffles, extra butter. And now if you want a little snack, maybe a few candies. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think they did it wrong. I want a candy dish. You can just, you know, maybe some Hershey's you can just pop in your mouth, you know, in the meal while you're eating. 
You got if you want to be a feeder too, you want to be the best feeder you can possibly be. I'm or not feeding. Feed, I want to be a feedy. Well, best feeding you can possibly. Fuck feeding. Fuck that. I want my food. I want my fucking food, bitch. Wow. I think wow. I think you could probably get Chelsea Good. into it. Yeah, I think She's so. She's got to feed you pizza pies and donuts and ice Sounds cream all day. Sounds easy enough, man. You know, let's get on it. <gasps> Stranger things have happened, TJ. They have. And they're about to, too. Why is that? Because it's your turn, Paul. Oh, my God. Well, I'm glad we waited until later in the episode <laughs> to get to my part. <laughs> and I appreciate that TJ... Gave me cock and ball torture because he knows that I'm a squeamish fuck. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. But I will tell you this, TJ. Yeah. I rose to your challenge. You did? And I found a man that doesn't necessarily <laughs> exemplify cock and ball torture, but engaged in it to a level that most men can never credibly claim to have engaged in it. Whoa. This is Bob Flanagan. <coughs> cool. And this guy was apparently a huge counterculture figure in the 90s. He was a member of the Groundlings, which we've covered some members of. You remember oh, some Groundling yeah. members? Uh, a lot of them went on to SNL yes. stuff. Yeah. yeah, a lot of So comedy he did some work legends. with the Groundlings. Oh, a very smart guy, a very talented guy, an artist, a visual artist, a poet. Well, you and said, well, you said was. Is he dead? He is dead. Oh, he is dead. Okay. Self-described super masochist. Um, this is Bob Flanagan. And... Um, this is from a work that is a giant wall that he and his wife made where they had, I think, I can't remember the exact number, but it was something like 39 different implements to beat him with. Hold on. So each one of these is like a different, uh, different implement really being used? Um, 39 elements to beat him with. And then uh, a series of like 100 photos with each <laughs> implement, and it covers the entire wall. It's called Faces wow. of Pain. I mean, Faces so, of so it's Pain. A, it is kind of a unique concept. It's kind of something you would see in like a major city. Like I like how city, each uh, exhibit, expression of pain is a little different. Yes. Too. Really, it is, yeah. Because they always, I, I think, are. And these are, and these are various. Uh, so they're using a different thing on him each time to get this expression or to capture this expression, I'm, I guess, I'm assuming or guessing. Yeah. Cool. Um, so anyway. He um, also had cystic fibrosis. He was born oh. with it, which is a terminal disease. Most people don't live past their youth with it. Very rare for somebody to make it to 20. Uh, what does that do? Uh, it, it is a lung disease, a respiratory disease that makes your uh, lungs produce a ton of phlegm, basically. <clears throat> oh, damn. And so you're, you're constantly sick. In fat phlegm. Yeah, you're constantly prone to respiratory infection, constantly sick. Like I said, it usually people succumb to it in their childhood. Wow. Um, but he managed to live with it, and according to his own testimony, um, using S and M and cock and ball torture as part of that. Wow! So it was kind of like a coping mechanism yes. for him. Uh, he was in pain all day, every day, and pain. He had to reassert his uh, mastery over it, and he put his body through some crazy shit. Cool. There is a fantastic documentary that a friend put me onto. Um, that. If you're interested in this dude, you should check out because I'm not going to spend the whole episode talking about him. Like I said, he's not the poster child of cock and ball torture. Maybe he should be, though. He um, is now. The documentary is called Sick. Um, the Life and Death of Bob Flanagan, Super Masochist. And it's really cool and really hard to watch, especially if you're a squeamish fuck like me. <clears throat> uh, he at one point nails his penis and balls to a two-by-four while singing uh, a song called I Need a Hammer. <laughs> um, he had a very, uh, <laughs> he had a very like, dark sense of humor about everything that was wrong with him and all the things that he engaged in. And um, I pulled, I think, there's a uh, Happiness and Slavery, yeah. which a lot of people might remember this from the 90s. This is a uh, Nine oh, Inch for Nails sure, video, yeah. right? Yeah. So should I turn the volume off? <clears throat> or... Uh, Oh, I didn't. Okay, so this dude. Okay, cool. I didn't yeah. So, that. well, yeah. You, it, you, if you go to about three minutes, TJ, we won't show cock and balls. Okay, three minutes. But you'll get a good look at Bob being drilled and tortured by this insane uh, chair. Um, you didn't get much of a look at him, but he's he's very prominent in this video. 
Uh, most of the time, his dick and balls are out, so we can't really show that to you. But I was not aware that he was this guy until I started yeah. doing the research for this episode. And 1.9 million people have enjoyed his his torment <laughs> in On this Vimeo. music video. On I mean, Vimeo I had alone. this. On fucking Vimeo. This video was, like, underground because, obviously, it was way too explicit to be shown. On MTV, and yeah. it, and uh, Nine Inch Nails did a few releases of it on VHS and shit with a bunch of other rare shit, and I had it. Cool. So I, uh, it was, it's cool to know that this dude wasn't just some actor. You know that they were like, hey, here's a weird job. You got to pretend you're in pain. This is a dude that liked pain, and they were able to, they they put him through pain in the video. And like some of the shit that they do to him looks like it actually hurts, and then it gets special effectsy when they it rips him apart. Yeah, um, they didn't actually rip him apart for the video. No. <laughs> He's what probably you, sitting there like, God, I wish you could. Um, yeah, so he actually said he managed to live so long. He lived to the ripe old age of, I think it was 46. Wow. With a disease that usually kills people right. before they even reach adulthood. He said he had the ability to fight pain with pain. Uh, so self-inflicted pain might have canceled out the involuntary pain within caused by the disease. So he kind of used it as like a means of like, uh, I'm going to... If I'm going to be in pain all the time, I'm going to be in pain on my terms, basically. Right. Um, if you want to find, like, a picture of Bob in this video, like, find a frame of his face or some shit. I just don't want to accidentally... Uh, yeah, land on his cock. In, okay. okay, there you there go. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, just leave him there. Um, so, in order to talk about CBT with any kind of realistic view, you need to know a little bit about sadism and masochism. And I don't honestly know a whole lot about it i know kind of basically it's like scotty if you had to define sadomasochism how would you define it um probably the, I, I i would say the the, be, the best understanding i have it of is this is that if you're a sadist you like to inflict harm or pain on people you like to be a, the more of a dominant person in a relationship or mm -hmm. whatever you know uh, i guess it's just a sexual coupling of some kind and if you're a, the M part would be a so that you enjoy receiving that. Like, you enjoy being dominated, controlled, beaten, or whatever it is your kink is. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, I think we're in agreement there. And that sounds to be pretty uh, dead on with what I found. Um, but it's it goes way deeper than all that. So, um, most obviously, the sadist may uh, derive pleasure from feelings of power, authority, control, or from just the suffering of the masochist. The sadist may also harbor an unconscious desire to punish the object of its sec uh, their sexual attraction for having aroused his desire and thereby subjugated him or in some... So it's almost like, yeah, you, I was hot for you, so I want to punish you for that. Yeah. It's very intertwined. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, if you, right. if you just have one, it doesn't really complete it. So it's like, like you, know, you frustrated me. Yeah, S&M. Yeah, so it's like, but it's it's good because that's in a way he's being punished in that, in that sexual exchange, too, because it's like, you've made me so right. horny that I have to do this to you. So by objectifying his partner, who is thereby rendered subhuman, the sadist does not need to handle the partner's emotional baggage. And so there's a whole lot of disassociation in the act of sadomasochism that on the sadist sense. side. Um, for the masochist, taking on a role of subjugation and helplessness can offer a release from stress or the burden of responsibility or guilt. And obviously in this guy's case, uh, what was his name again? Bob Bob something? Flanagan. Bob Flanagan. In Bob Flanagan's case, clearly it had that, uh, that effect for of him. Course. <laughs> um, it can also evoke infantile feelings of dependency, safety, protection, which can serve as a proxy for intimacy. So all of those things are intertwined. You know, very few people are actually super vanilla sexually. Right. People are kinky. Most people have at least like a touch of some right. of this going on. Yeah, yeah. And all these figure. associations may all be subconscious, but they're there. It's like, oh, yeah. Bitch is so fine, I just want to fucking rip her apart or some shit. Or right. like, well, you know. Well, think about what would be orgasmic to someone like this, the release from the pain he constantly lives with. So, I mean, you could see this as like kind of him saying, well, I, I'm going to take on this pain, but then it gives I'm going to enjoy my pain. Yeah, I enjoy this pain because this is the pain, me saying fuck you to the pain I live with every day. Right. It may be like seeking approval from the sadist as well. Some uh, masochists claim to be driven by that. What did you think about, you know, Paul, you have a little bit of uh, more experience with this than you'd probably like because... You participated in that fucking game show oh that I came up God. with. Yeah, and your ass got beat fucking raw. And you dude. got beat more than like more than uh, most people who are like just casually into even the lifestyle. Right. You got beat like bad. Yeah. To where your ass was like just one giant bruise, mm -hmm. basically. 
I didn't really derive a whole lot of pleasure I from it. I didn't imagine that you did. But um, it wasn't entirely, like, horrible either. Like, if in a different setting, it might have been kind of cool. Did you ever get the uh, endorphin rush? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, dude. When she like when she was hitting me with that wooden paddle and, and would catch me with the edge with it and shit and kind of hitting the meat and, and the bone and shit. I know she wasn't really supposed to be doing that. Yeah, that's not. That was an but experience. That's just it bad. happened multiple not really, times. She didn't have a lot of experience And, like, yeah, dude, you'd get this, shit. like, as soon as, like, when it was done. Like, of course, during it, all you can concentrate on is the fire in your ass you know what i mean yeah or the back of your legs i, I remember like when fucking tj fucking <laughs> but <laughs> afterwards there is this like super rush and it's not like relief that it's over it's just like all that pent up potential energy in your body of getting beat on and not being not knowing exactly when it's going to stop releases and there's this flood of like kind of good feelings in your head so i could definitely see the association i don't for me, I don't know. Like, definitely not in a setting like that. Right. Was I going to be turned well, on? By well, him. yeah, because I mean, you're. I got Pim Monk in a gimp mask. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not going to be the. You know what I mean? You know, I'm not. I don't think many people were like hot by that because it was oh, no. My, my the context just wasn't right for that. Mm, but, but you know, if if it, it was, was Mistress fun. Jen and I alone in a room, I might have been fucking. I don't know. Yeah, maybe you probably wouldn't have let her go that squeal, far. Piggy, squeal, piggy, squeal. You'd probably be like. <laughs> yeah, I probably would have cried wolf. <laughs> You know, or or cried uncle or whatever they avocado. call it. Avocado, <laughs> yeah, avocado. There's usually some kind of uh, mustard coffee. flour. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, flour. but going into it, Paul knew he was gonna take Chrysanthemum. a beat because he fucking. Fuck oh no problem. Gotcha. Dude, well, during that, I remember what fucking Paul told me afterwards. But the reason he, he he fucking won, he's like, you know what? He's like, at a certain point, I I, knew, I noticed I had a fucking lead. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna fucking buzz in every time because I'll just take it. I'll just take the bullshit. So, I mean, like, you can already see, like, that probably is a strategy that people employ even if they enjoy this shit. You know what I mean? Like, you enjoy getting beat. It's probably like, how much can I even take? Or, you know, at a certain point, I'll just take all the pain. I'll just take it all. I mean, you're kind of, well, you're kind of into the dispensing of pain, aren't you? Take it all. Like, you're into whipping or something. I'm a sadomasochist, so I'm into both. Okay, you're into both. Okay. Well, what about from the other perspective? The, the, The fucking, the one inflicting the pain. What about from that perspective? What do you think someone's thinking when they're doing it to some guy like, you know, Bob Flanagan here or whoever, or, you know, Paul? I mean, there's as many, I feel like there's as many unique pathologies involved as there is with any other activity. Well, sure. Like, you know, you watch. But why does someone take that up and, like, want to do it constantly? I mean, yeah. That, right. It, but I mean, like. Right. It's like you, I, I, you know, I got in that, that uh, Forged in Fire show where they're making knives and shit. Yeah, I'm saying, what's the, like, the casual see all, person in that You person? see all these people that have, they're all into this sort of uh, metal work and forging knives and shit, but, you know, they come to it from different psychological angles, and it's scratching different psychological itches for all of them. And I feel like stuff like this is the same way. I don't feel like there's one catch-all sort of like, this is... The sadist mentality. No, this no, is no, no, the no. masochist mentality. This, like, I just don't know much about it, to be honest with you. I so. pulled a little bit about it, like a cursory look, and I'm glad we're having a conversation about it because there's really no way to talk about it without introducing the idea. But it is widely varied. There are people that are on like super far ends of the spectrum for some of this shit um, on both ends, as sadists and as masochists. Right. I think Bob Flanagan was a guy that was probably more extreme than most. He, oh, the, for the, sure. the damage oh, yeah, well, that he wait. liked to have done to his body was well beyond, I think, what most people would take. But um, he always had a great sense of humor about it. So if you're interested in seeing more about him, I'd check out that uh, documentary if you can find it. Uh, Sick. Um, yeah. And uh, that brings us to the topic at hand. We now know what sadomasochism is from a very, very layman's angle, so we can talk about cock and ball torture. Cool. Um, Finally. So co- I'm, I didn't pull a like strict definition for I think cock it's and pretty, ball torture. I think it's pretty obvious. Because it really it's, is it's what right it sounds like. Yeah, it's just what it is. It is, and, and it's really anything that you can think of all the way leading up to actually dismembering the penis in some people's minds emasculating going a little castrated. bit far there you know but whatever yeah, we've talked about that yeah the, the mind tile kind of story guy right? mind right. tile actually cut off and ate his penis i'm mean, right. not going to rehash we that cover I mean, that there are people like i said on too. the very extreme ends of this but most yeah. of this is about pain and how far you can be pushed and how much little bits of damage you can take to that area bruises and little micro abrasions that's where most people land on this shit 
So I pulled some implements of cock and ball torture. These are clothespins. Now, TJ, I'm sure you're, I've I've ex- I've been on the receiving end of the clothespin, so I the know. Clothespins were one of the things that we used in the wheel of uh, yes. torture. I had my nipples covered with like probably six a piece. I think. Yeah, the or thing five that, a piece. The interesting thing about clothespins that a lot of people don't realize is that yeah, does it hurt to put the clothespin on? Yes. Yeah, the pinch is nasty. But, but there's a numbness that comes after yeah. you've had it on for a while. After a while, it gets numb. But the real pain is when you take it off. See, dude, if, can you go to the Wheel of Torture episode? Because when I sit down, when I finally win, you can see me pulling these things off of my nipples and how fucking much pain I'm in. Dude, it was yeah. the most excruciating thing that happened to me that night. I'm, uh, it felt like a bullet every time I had to take one of those off. I'm not going to scroll through that because I, I don't want to show DP on. Oh, on yeah, the yeah. FF, yeah. I, I didn't even think of it that way. But, but uh, yeah. It's I like just, putting a Band-Aid on, man. Like dude, it was horrible. When you put a fucking Band-Aid on, it's like, oh, Well, well what cool. happens is uh, when you put something on there, it stops the blood from rushing that area. Right. Which is going to uh, basically make it numb, like you were talking about. Mm-hmm. So putting the clothespin on, that hurts. But you know what? In about two or three minutes, you're not even going to feel it really no, much you anymore. Don't. Uh, but when it's you like take it off and, and that blood pain. rushes back in... Yep. That's when the that's actually the most painful part. And so people who think like, oh, I just I can't take it anymore, and they take it off, they don't realize you're actually in for the worst part of the fucking process there. So. Right. So knowing that, you can imagine what these are used for. They are yes. pinned all over the cock or the balls. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether the cock is flaccid or hard doesn't seem to matter. It probably varies. Um, and then you know it, it can. They, and it's not just the cock and balls these are used on. Like TJ said, nipples. I oh, saw I Bob Flanagan get these all over his stomach. I've like seen. Little I've seen of uh, mainstream TV shows put clothespins on on people. You know, sure. it's like it's it's an easy, effective means of not really hurting someone, but eliciting pain. Um, you know, this is not going to do any permanent damage to your body. So I pulled kind of a sexy uh, definition here. The go-to household implement that is quick, easy to use on a slave. The online dominatrix can have you attach dozens of those sadistic little pegs to your sensitive skin, making you clamp more and more onto your shaft, and then keep adding them to your nutsack as well until there's no skin left showing. Dozens of pegs all biting away at the same time, leaving you in agony. That does not sound appealing to me in the least. No. But Oh, shit, sorry. What? No, I was. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, TJ. What are you doing? I was. Uh, Why are your pants down? Oh, Never mind. Dude. Never mind that. Never mind. Just Next the, thing. The fucking thought of just putting clothespins all over my dick. Is, oh, how you about chili it. sauce or powder all down hot. your dick or in your pee hole? Yes. How about that? I've, I've how about un- a sriracha dick hole? I've like not that? put something directly in my pee hole, but I've unintentionally fucking. I, I was like cutting up peppers one time and fucking it did touch my dick, dude. And I'll tell you what, it was fucking one of the worst fucking feelings I've ever experienced in my life. So lots of doms like to make their slaves pour hot chili sauce or rub powder no. all over their cocks and balls. Don't fucking do it, man. After a few moments, it will start to burn. The pain will be intense as she makes you stand there and not move. It will feel like your junk is on fire. Fire. I don't think maybe sriracha would be the most spicy thing you no, could No, sriracha, that's like amateur level shit. Fuck no, dude. I wouldn't want sriracha down my pee hole, though. No, you probably wouldn't. But, I mean, that's, uh, that's definitely, there's definitely stuff that's a lot rougher. Well, how about the next implement, TJ? Oh, I just wanted to point out you could also do this with Icy Hot. Oh, yeah. There's actually quite a few things that'll burn your dick if you put it on there. Oh, yeah. One of them sure. is, uh, by the way, Lysol. So, oh, gross. I uh, don't want Lysol. No, you shouldn't on do my that. Menu. That was an accidental thing. Oh, yeah. I've told the story. Oh, yeah, that's right. Don't put that orange smelling uh, shit on your balls accidentally. You know either. what you, sh- you should have put, TJ? <laughs> Essential oils, dude. Essential oils. So, what about this here, TJ? It's a wrinkly ass hand. What about a good old hand slap? Now uh, think about like I don't know, dude. I don't like having my dick and balls slapped around, but it hurts, man. It takes your fucking breath away to have your dick and balls hit. Mm-hmm. Yes, I mean well, like look, a, we're talking about here is uh, you know the reason. I mean, balls are the most vulnerable part of a, a man's body. Right. If we're just like you know like it, you know women uh, in the self defense courses and shit always learn like go for the balls, attack the balls. It's just like the built-in weak spot. It's like the fucking exhaust port on the Death Star. So, yeah. Uh, and a, a, a nice, effective judo chop to the nuts, is, uh, is it's going to work. It's going to do exactly what it needs to do. That's a trope, dude, in movies and like comic books and shit, though. If you fight like, a super bad villain and someone goes for the knee and the nuts and it's like, ain't nothing there. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> ain't nothing there? What the fuck? I've seen that one or they just fucking take it. Like, it doesn't even hurt him. It's like, I hit you yeah. in the nuts, dude. And it didn't even fucking phase you. 
They should yeah. do one where you try, where the, the hero goes to punch the nuts and the, their hand breaks because the nuts are I will are so say, big. in my life, I've seen the perfect nut shot because it actually is hard to hit someone with nuts, dude. No, it is hard to hit direct. Because, like, when, like fucking one day when Stevie was about that high for TJ, he just walked up to TJ for some, like no reason. He was just a little fucking shit kid and just mm-hmm. punched TJ squarely in his fucking nuts, dude. Oh, my Fuck. God. And that motherfucker, I mean, like, and TJ at that time was like 6'4". And Stevie is maybe like three feet tall. TJ dropped like a ton of fucking bricks, Jesus, dude. dude. And then, then TJ's revenge was smashing Stevie's like, uh, what was that fucking movie at the time? Um, I don't know. Space movie. God, what was it? Uh, Danger Will Robinson. Danger, danger. Um, oh, Lost, Lost in, in space. space. Lost in Space. He's, I did him a favor by smashing like, that. Fuck piece of you, shit. Stevie! You take the toy and just crush it. Stevie's like, ah! And the funny thing is, TJ got in trouble for smashing the toy, and Stevie didn't get punished for punching TJ in the nuts. So no, he's just a little kid. He doesn't understand. So that's a, and it's I, like you don't understand. And the yeah, the point of that being that like, that was just one nut shot to see someone get smacked over and over again is just nuts to me. No pun intended. Well, this is for the CBT practitioner on a budget. So even if you got no props to use, it's still possible to have a cock and ball torture uh, session. Your dom can lift up your cock and then make you slap your balls hard, or oh. she can do it over and over again until you're grunting. With the impact harder and harder until you're almost in tears, TJ. Yep. That's true. This episode's like unsettling. You don't need all the fucking funky implements to dish out pain. All you need is a good old-fashioned hand. How about elastic bands, Scotty? (sighs) What do you feel about those? (laughs) What do you think is done with these? Uh, I don't want to know. What do you think happened, Scotty? I don't want to know. Yeah, Scotty, what do you think happened? What do you think, Scotty? Scotty, I think they're probably put around your cock and balls in a very painful, tight yes, way. You're absolutely right. That is correct, sir. Lots of tiny little elastic bands wrapped tightly around your shaft is extremely painful. Uh. <laughs> they will make you put more and more on. The friction alone will cause intense pain, but when she makes you pull them, uh, pull them out, then let them snap back, you will be oh. doubled over with tears in your eyes. You know when you're on like a roller coaster and you have that moment of like weightlessness. Mm-hmm. The minute you start talking about this shit, I just felt like that moment of weightlessness has yeah. just stayed with me as I think about my balls being destroyed. Yeah. You ever like, been like just kind of sitting around doing a podcast and you have that moment of hardness? <laughs> no. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Never. No. How about this, though, Scotty? <laughs> <laughs> no, you may not think it's true, Scotty, but this is a cock and ball torture implement. Just the no mere uh-uh. anticipation. Of having your cock and or balls snapped up in a rat killing trap. Okay, so you're saying that some dude actually wants to put his multiple junk. dudes. This okay, is so not a. And this is not just like one crazy so dude did this once. Tens dudes of thousands, like this shit. if not millions of dudes, want their nuts or their dick by a mousetrap. This is one of the most painful around, according to you know people on the harder end of CBT. Uh, she has you clamp the trap around your genitals, and then you got to leave it there. So you may not set off the trap with your dick and balls, but these things I've are, definitely seen it done that way. Have intense pressure. I didn't go looking for it, so I'll take your word for it, TJ. <laughs> um, but yeah, even if she just, you know, these are supposed to kill a rat. So if if your dick is in that, your dick is the rat. <laughs> Just, let's just put it that Not way. Nice to sing way to explain it. Your dick is the rat or a mouse. Yes. I mean, it's fucked. But there, this is the level that some people will go to. What about a riding crop? Maybe a little softer than a rat trap, but... I take it over a Scotty, fucking look, rat hey, trap. Scotty, look over here, dude. Trap. Look over here, Scotty. What the fuck, <laughs> What? What the fuck? <laughs> what if there's what like the a... What the fuck? A gif one? It's gonna get the cheese. Oh the shit, dude! The fuck! He's gonna get the cheese. Is he dude. showing you rat trap dick oh, gifts over there? Why are these <laughs> fucking dudes doing this shit, man? Stop, man! Stop! What's fucking wrong with these fucking guys? Your fucking dick's a mousetrap. What, what does your life become? I mean, I don't know, dude. I can't say they're objectively wrong to do that, but it doesn't. I just don't get why you want would want to. I mean, would you ever do that, TJ? I mean, I know Paul ain't gonna do that shit, no. but would you ever fucking put your dick in a mousetrap? My dick's too small to even fit in a mousetrap. Doesn't matter. Your balls could fit. Oh, dude, trust <laughs> me. What about your ball? It's cock <laughs> and ball torture. That's true. Uh, mousetrap? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Probably not. I don't. I don't look at the mouse. I'm not. 
I'm not really excited by the prospect of cock and ball torture anyway. Maybe if I had a big dick, I'd be into it. I don't know. But mm. I feel like Sounds I Sounds like you really got the uh, short end of the stick on that one. I did. Oh, it's zinger. True. It's true. Anyway. So what about a riding crop, TJ? What about it, Paul? Throw one up there. I pulled one. Okay, here you go. I mean, this is probably what you'd imagine. Wailing this. away on your cock and balls with a riding crop. Have you ever taken a riding crop? I don't think there was one involved with the uh, Wheel of Torture. I and I've never there taken was. One. Yeah, yeah, I thought you guys did. There was a crop. Was there? It wasn't really. I don't know if it was in this tradition. I think there was. There was. I'm pretty sure. I can't remember. There was I remember there being similar. a cane. Yeah. Or well, like a, a, pretty a rod There was or an implement like this. I'm, there I'm was an implement sure. that is similar in nature to this, if not this. So much like a wooden spoon, a riding crop will hurt when battered off your balls. <laughs> More, sting, uh, more stingy than a deep thud of a spoon, though, uh, a crop will hurt greatly. These whippy little bastards can cause you to sob and make you squeal with hurt. Cool. So I imagine these are pretty not pleasant to have. Well, I guess for some people, super pleasant. But. Well, Paul, I've seen you wearing that shirt, the uh, wooden spoon survivor. Did you actually ever get hit with the spoon? Yeah. You yeah. did? My, I, my mom had a spanking spoon. I used to get it with the belt, too, but did I never. Get, did you get hit in the front or just on your butt with the spoon? A uh, butt. Okay, dude. Because I've heard of like, some kids getting hit like the face with the fucking spoon. No, or arms no. I or always whatever. got hit on the butt or the back of my legs or whatever. I don't know. We were lucky. Me and she did never had the fucking go pick a switch moment or whatever in our lives. Our, our parents are pretty much both opposed to, you know, uh, spankings and shit. So we got off lucky. We, like, we would act horrible and not have to fucking face some shit like this. Fuck consequences, brah. Uh, what about some weights? Oh. What do you think you could do with some weights, Scotty? You want to speculate on uh, this one? Uh... I've, I've seen videos. Like, uh, I think they attach yeah. a weight to yeah. their penis. So that's exactly what it is. Or it's about both. rigging up various levels of weights to a piercing that's I, through your penis or balls or just tying them to your cock and balls, strangling them with the weight. Um, there are variations of both that you can find. Do um, people do this also to enlarge, try to enlarge their penis? Uh, yeah, actually, yes. I'm sure they do. Yeah. yeah there's I don't actually, know if it works. It does not. Um, there's people who... <laughs> I don't know from experience. I've <laughs> TJ's done had research. a fucking five pound oh, weight TJ, dangling you, off. Didn't you buy uh, ancient Chinese? Uh, yeah, I do have some ancient penis Chinese penis enlargement oil. Penis enlargement oil. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a video about my uh, my penis Your oil journey progress. Did to a fat giant. Yeah, penis. my journey to a big Chinese dick. Cool. Um, but no, uh, yeah, there's dudes that uh, actually have they try to stretch their dicks out by tying weights to them. Are they often the weights? same ones? They're, are they yeah. also the yeah. same, uh, you know, the sadomasochistic, and they're also trying to get a bigger dick? Is that usually... I don't hand? know. I don't, I don't know so. either. I think that's just d dudes that are desperate to have a big dick. I know Bob Flanagan probably did not give a fuck about that angle of it. They can't he, But he was kind of famous for... He would do these kind of stand-up routines. Not really stand-up, but little talks, little spoken word performances that were oftentimes funny. And one of his favorite tricks to do would be to come out in front of an audience with like a bathrobe and then at some point just throw the bathrobe off and reveal that his dick is like literally stretched to the max with like a 10 pound weight just hanging between his legs and he'd sit there and do the whole thing with that so this is a popular one here uh, maybe for varying reasons maybe for maybe some people find it hot that their dick is going to stretch out or whatever the fuck yeah maybe maybe paul maybe um what about Urethra torture. What about that, Scotty? I just pulled. I pulled this one because I wanted you to try and imagine why that would be urethral torture. It's shoving a pin cap down your piss oh. hole. That's actually, according to my sources, a very common way okay. for people to self-experiment with urethra yeah. sounding. For when you're curious, you know, you're, you don't want to know what you want to shove up your urethra, but then you see a pen cap and you go, ah, eureka, ah, I found it. Urethra, yep. I mean, eureka. Yeah, I found it. <laughs> um, so there are a number of so things. Did you, I'm sure for your research, Paul, you uh, decided to try this, right? I shoved a number of things down my pee hole. And I only stopped when I broke off a spaghetti noodle, and I've been in a lot of pain since. Oh, yeah, that's spaghetti noodle. So I don't want to... That's why you got it. I could have warned you against the spaghetti noodle, Paul. No, I've never... Uh, actually, this is not true. I'll be fucking maybe even too honest with you guys. Sweet. There was, in my mom's bathroom when I was a kid, there was a fake plant. Have you seen those fake plants? Like oh, a of fake course. flower. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? And it was a flower that had those... What's that part in the middle? The stamen and the pistol or whatever? Mm. They come out of a flower, the little dick on a flower. <laughs> I don't know. That, you know what I'm talking I, about? I think it's a, I know it's a little about. part of a flower. I don't know what the... Pistol, what the yeah. Whatever it is. It's a middle part of the flower. It, right. So it had that shit. And I looked at it one day, and one of the flowers had fallen off of it onto the ground, and I was taking a bath. 
And I looked at that shit one day, and oh I was like, God, dude, dude, I bet that fucking pistol would fit in my pee hole. <laughs> I bet that flower part. And I put it in there. And I did it a bunch of times, so I must have liked something about it. Oh. Maybe you need to reconnect with your... But I've never oh. got... No, no, that thing was tiny. It was <laughs> on a flower, you know what I mean? It was not a pin cap. Yeah. I could probably put my dick in this pin cap. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> um, no, urethra torture does not obviously stop at pin caps and your mom's fake plants in your bathroom. <laughs> um, you can shove batteries, pin what? lids, whole pin lids, even a finger down your pee hole if you train uh. yourself. And some guys want it. Uh, also, some dudes shove metal rods all the way down their oh. urethra, uh, especially designed ones that they can come through. <laughs> They're hollow in the middle. <laughs> Why not? Of course. So if the dude gets too turned on while he's screaming <laughs> his pee hole. Well, of course. I'm sorry to be explicit, but I'm just letting you know what yeah, this is sure, about. This is, it's called sounding or urethral sounding. <laughs> and it is um, a very popular thing. A very experimental type of thing that turns into people literally reaming their pee holes with like double D batteries. Oh, and shit. Okay. So now we've looked at some implements, Scotty, and I can tell you're super comfortable and probably hard as a rock. Yeah, definitely. Right now. <laughs> Scotty's so aroused, dude. My, so we know some of the my things. My dick has gone into hiding. We know some of the things that we can use. What are some of the techniques? <laughs> of techniques, oh, Scotty. Oh. Cock and ball torture. Oh, uh, what? what is, what's going to happen here? This one is called ball busting. <sighs> and I couldn't pull a picture of ball busting, but I want you to imagine that there's a naked dude on the ground, on his back, right below her raised foot, just waiting to receive a savage downward kick right in the dick and the balls and slam them against the fucking studio floor there. That is exactly what it ta uh, sounds like. Ball busting can be kicking, punching, hitting, slapping, using a paddle or a whip or any kind of hitting of the balls meant to cause not only pain of the strike, but, of course, the... Oh, there you go. <laughs> so uh -huh. that's ball busting, Scotty. Uh, great. Ball busting. What do you think of ball busting, Scotty? Um, I never want to participate in that activity. Yeah, that one. this one does not appeal to me either. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Please wink, stop. Wink, Please stop. nudge, nudge. You didn't hear the safe so word. Please record, stop. Balls literally busted. Oh, man, dude, my balls. I'm... Pfft. My balls are in a vice right now. What you talking about? Have your fucking <laughs> right balls now? been worth like a speed bag, TJ? Oh, yeah. TJ, actually, can you yeah. reach down and pull a clothespin off of your nuts for us uh, real quick? Yeah, sure. TJ wants fucking Damn. Ip Man. I wish there was one on my desk. I could bluff it TJ, out. That would have been TJ, funny. Have you seen Ip Man, dude? Have you seen that movie? Uh, Ip Man, yeah. Dude, yeah. you know, is that a fucking crazy punch thing? You want? He's going to do that to your nuts, dude. Ip Man? Oh, fuck that. I don't want anybody <laughs> punching my balls, man. It hurts. Ip Man's going to fucking I grew up with sisters work. who would like... Oh, Do the shit. dirty deed, kick you in the fucking balls and shit when you were arguing. I've been kicked. I've been punched in the balls a couple of times. It is not good. I know that it's not a fetish of mine. I don't want to be ball busted. But what about... Some guys do. How about, how about something a little lighter, Scotty? You might be into uh, this. Yeah, something a little light. Ball stretching. <laughs> oh, my God. Some guys People like to have like one nut or, or their whole ball bag kind of put in a big old <laughs> pair of forceps. <laughs> It's like people want medieval torture. It's like rack his nuts. And they just have the chick kind of yank on them and stretch those nuts out. Some guys put tons and tons of like little rings around their nuts or elastic bands to stretch them out to an obscene length. Okay. Um, some people just like a chick or a dude to come and pull on their fucking balls, stretch them manually. Just grab my nuts real hard. One and pull. nut in each hand and just lean back. Just pull them. Uh, the like idea is to make the slave strong, suffer balls. while the dominatrix or dominator, I guess, is pulling his balls until the pain makes him scream or beg. It's often used as part of uh, femdom, I guess. Femdom. More, more popular to see this Female kind of stuff. I'm your balls. Oh, God, please. You've been a dirty boy that needs his balls stretched. Oh, no, not that, mistress, not that. Oh, yeah, that. I'm getting the forceps, you dirty little pig. Oh, 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 please, no. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes, no. Did you say slave, yes. Oh, oh no, yes, no. I, I, okay. I'm so conflicted. <laughs> what about electro cock torture? I'm a piggy. Electro cock torture. How about that, Scotty? Does, it, does having your dick and or balls and or both electrocuted appeal to you in any way? Uh... <laughs> Because the power's on, Scotty. I got power at uh, this house. I'm going to have to pass on this one as well. 
So the kinky CBT cock and ball game uh, requires a special kind of equipment, so it's more complicated than most of the mentioned cock and ball torture techniques on this list. This uh, is sure. high. This is the high tech cock and yeah. ball. Yeah, like, this is high brown, hobbyist dude. cock and ball torture. They should come up with like I, this is something like Apple should come out with like the the eye cock torture. Yeah, eye you know? tort. Yeah, something like that. Um, so it, it's basically a rig that combi- sometimes combines sounding, but. With the additional... Oh, yeah, because if you're going to get your fucking cock electric, you want it electric on the inside, too, you know? So sometimes with additional electrodes hooked up to the sounding metal bar that's down their pee hole, right? Yeah. So that they get electrocuted as their pee hole is being reamed, or their balls get electrocuted. And there's various levels of this. Some of it is just, like, little shocks to titillate, and some of it is, like, just full-blown, like, can you take a car battery to your dick? (sighs) What the fuck, dude? This sounds like some Eastern European torture shit. I found it. It literally is. Some of the shit I found looking for this, just so that I would know how far to go in my description of it, was fucking, like, horrible. These dudes, like, it took them, like, minutes to recover from the electric, uh, uh, the shock of it. So, some dudes do not fuck around with this, but there's, obviously, with anything, there's various levels of controllable sensation here. But it sounds uh, not great. What about this one, Scotty? What do you think this is about? Oh, no. Don't tell me they bite their fucking dicks. Yes, bite, cock biting, and balls, too. Cockbiter, you caught up in the cockbiter. Some guys, and I'm one of these dudes, like a little nibbling during a blowjob. There's nothing wrong with nibble. <laughs> but we're not talking about a nibble here, Scotty. That's not really cock and ball torture. Imagine That's ravenous dogs teasing. ripping apart a piece of meat, Scotty. Well, maybe not that far, but yes, you could go that far. There are people on that end of the spectrum. There are people whose ultimate sexual, sex, sexual thrill would be to have a man or woman that they're attracted to dominate them, and then bite their penis off in an act of sexual pleasure. Now, not many people go Whoa, through with it. Whoa, dude, that's like going the, the fucking the Raina Bobbitt far with that shit. They're like fucking right. cutting off the dick or biting off the dick. I mean, but if you think about it, most people don't go through with it that. And still no. people, a lot of people like having their dicks and balls bitten. And the reason for that is kind of like the intention of it. It's like, I could bite your dick off. In another universe, maybe I do bite your dick off. Like the the implication of being at the mercy of that is what these guys are after. And so there's varying levels from like a pretty hard bite to really trying to hurt this dude. And this is such a dehumanizing picture to put up. It's not even a person's face. It's just their mouth. It's right. Because, like, you know, because it's guys and women that do this and it's not, you know, there's really no. It's just a bite. It's the fucking bite. It's like those fucking titans from Attack on Titan. It's the empty fucking smiley little face and then just... Right. Yeah. And um, I, some of the stuff that I found with this was actually harder for me to watch than a lot of the other stuff. Because the guys really respond. There's something visceral, uh, vi- sorry, visceral about being eaten. Oh, yeah. Like there's a natural like, ah, and you can see it in these dudes. Like because these chicks will bite them so fucking hard. That I, th- I the, the dudes will check to see if they're bleeding or if they lost a nut. I mean, they want to be bitten that hard. They want to feel like, oh my god, she bit my fucking cock off. But obviously, they want to be able to do that again. Within a limit, yeah. So she doesn't want, they, or they, they don't want to, to actually have their dick bitten off. So that's the fine line that you're walking with this. And guys will ride that all the way to the limit, and sometimes beyond it. Check this out, skitty. So let's talk about some tools and implements of the trade, since we've talked about. Look at that. Look at that! These are specialized cock and ball torture only tools. Why do that amateur hour shit when you can get some specialized equipment? Uh, This is a three in one ball stretcher. So your balls are supposed to be slowly but surely stretched. And then once they're long enough, down at the bottom, is there is there respite for those balls, Scotty? Uh, there is is there sweet release from the tightness and the pulling of the stretching? Uh, Not at all. No, there is a bit of spice. So when you finally get to the end, there's a bed of spikes to greet your swollen, red, stretched balls. <laughs> you can impale, dude. This thing is a sadistic piece of uh, machinery. And, They're uh, impaling my balls. By the way, you can get one for as low as like thirty nine ninety five. Um, too too much for me. Um, go to the next. Well, one, I was showing it to Taylor earlier. She's like, "Yeah, we got to get one of those for she, the bed." She ordered one. Yeah, remember so. she w- jumped on Amazon. You might want to. Sp- you might want to talk to her about that. Yeah, you Scotty. might want to call her and tell her because I think she. Uh, I think she saw that and she was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna. Like, me and Scotty are gonna get into that." I don't think so. What do you think, Scotty? <laughs> what about the um, what about the ultimate ball crusher, Scotty? It's the ultimate ball. Crusher. No, yeah, I pulled this one because there was a lot of ball no substitutes. Implements. How the fuck? Okay. Okay. Well, okay. So someone's gonna put their balls in. I don't that. even understand this and one. It, you're gonna put. 
and then you're gonna push down on it. Or so this you, one has oh, a little. How does it work? It's hard to see. Your balls. This one is meant to be. You know, you lay on your back, and your balls are kind of tucked up into it. Okay. okay. And then on the internals of this, and it's hard to see because they've got it screwed down in this picture. There's a plate that, as you turn the crank, it gets closer and closer to the bottom of this where your balls are. Right. And your balls are, of course, constricted through the small hole, so they can't escape that way. So as this plate gets cranked down, it flattens against your balls, and they squeezes them a little tighter, and then starts to fucking really get uncomfortable. And she'll crank it, or he'll crank it. You know what I mean? And then, like, a lot. I saw a dude get this done, and he was given an interview afterwards, and it took him a while to recover. And he said he literally thought she'd flattened his balls. He said it felt like his balls were like wafer thin on the on the really on the cusp of busting open. He was surprised he didn't bust a nut. Damn. Like break a nut. <laughs> he did bust a nut. Right? He went ahead and busted a nut anyway, but he thought he might have broken a nut. Probably like a nut bust a nut, you know. Same shit. All right, so maybe same you don't old, like the balls old. fucked with Scotty. Right. That's no. fine. What about yeah. ribbed sounds? Can, What's that? <laughs> so these are like the metal rods that I talk, talked about earlier, but of course varying sizes. Ribbed ages. for your pleasure, Scotty. And spiky. Ribbed. So that every like little quarter inch that goes in is hard, you know what I mean? It's kind of, ah, 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 and when it comes out, that's the big thing with these ribbed sounds. These dudes like to have them in for a long time, and then their dom will come and just like, and you can imagine what that feels like, Scott. Yeah, I can imagine. Going in, it's tough. Going out, it's rough. You know what I mean? I don't fucking, I don't know, man. I mean, I guess if people are into anything. I just don't see the fucking appeal to fucking torturing your fucking self. It's like. You're literally going medieval on your fucking cock and having someone else do it. It's like, why would you want to fucking do this? Like, you're literally going to shove a fucking spike down your fucking pee hole. Yes. The fuck is wrong with these fucking people, well, man? Well, you know what, Sky? We're going to kind of go... We're going to take it down a notch. Look at this nice friend. What? Guy. How now, is this one, I think, you're is... You're putting a lock on your dick? This one's named Mike's Spikes. And I'm not exactly 100% sure what it's even supposed to do. I think it might be go around your balls or your dick. No, no, this goes around your dick. Okay. This goes around your dick, and then these uh, spikes are pushed into your dick, basically. Uh, I'm guessing when you get fucking hard, then it, it's worse, right? Yeah. Yes, sure. of course. And she has, very, she has control. As you can see, she can screw those screws tighter or loosen them. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. I saw Taylor order one of these, too, by the <sighs> Fuck, way. Fuck, dude. So you're going to be in the ball stretcher, and you're going to have Mike spikes. And you can't even get out. No, this is meant to be a chastity device. Yeah, this is like an extreme chastity device. Yeah, so this is meant to make you so you can't get sexual. Most of them just make it where you can't get a boner. This one's actually like, no, we're going to fucking jam spikes into your dick, you son of a bitch. Right, and then, you know, of course, your dom has the key to that lock up there. And only they can let you out of this. So that's part of this kind of slave match. It's part of the game, Scotty. So that's about part all I pulled. Part of put. the game. That's about all I pulled on cock and ball torture. I did pull a long poem by Bob Flanagan that I think is cool. It's called Why. And it's all of the reasons, because he got tired of people asking him why he was the way he was. Because he was very open and uh, exhibitionistic about the way he presented himself. And so he tried to think of all the reasons, and he made this piece of spoken word that I think is worth listening to all the way through. All right. So we'll just shut the fuck up and listen then. Fair enough. Why? Because it feels good. Because it gives me an erection. Because it makes me come. Because I'm sick. Because there was so much sickness. Because I say fuck the sickness. Because I like the attention. Because I was alone a lot. Because I was different. Because kids beat me up on the way to school. Because I was humiliated by nuns. Because of Christ and the crucifixion. Because of porky pig in bondage force fed by some sinister creep in a black cape. Because of stories about children hung by their wrists, burned on the stove, scalded in tubs. Because of mutiny on the bounty, because of cowboys and Indians, because of Houdini, <coughs> because of my cousin Cliff, because of the forts we built and the things we did inside them, because of what's inside me, because of my genes, because of my parents, because of doctors and nurses, because they tied me to the crib so I wouldn't hurt myself, because I had time to think, because I had time to hold my penis, because I had awful stomach aches and holding my penis made it feel better, because I felt like I was going to die, because it makes me feel invincible, because it makes me feel triumphant, <clears throat> because I'm a Catholic, because I still love Lent, and I still love my penis, and in spite of it all, I have no guilt. Because my parents said, be what you want to be, and this is what I want to be. Because I'm nothing but a big baby, and I want to stay that way, and I want a mommy forever, even a mean one, especially a mean one. Because of all the fairy tale witches, and the wicked stepmother, and the stepsisters, 
and how sexy Cinderella was, smudged with soot, doomed to a life of servitude. Because of Hansel, locked in the witch's cage until he was fat enough to eat. Because of O oh, and how desperately I wanted to be her. Because of my dreams, because of the games we played, because I've got an active imagination, because my mother bought me tinker toys, because hardware stores give me hard-ons, because of hammers, nails, clothespins, wood, padlocks, pulleys, eyeballs, thumbtacks, staple guns, sewing needles, wooden spoons, fishing tackle, chains, metal rulers, rubber tubing, spatulas, rope, twine, C-clamps, S-hooks, razor blades, scissors, tweezers, knives, push pins, two by fours, <coughs> ping pong paddles, alligator clips, duct tape, broomsticks, barbecue skewers, bungee cords, sawhorses, soldering irons, because of tool sheds, because of garages, because of basements, <coughs> because of dungeons, because of the pit and the pendulum, because of the Tower of London, because of the Inquisition, because of the rack, because of the cross, because of the Adams family playroom, because of Morticia Adams and her black dress with its octopus legs, because of motherhood, because of Amazons, because of the goddess, because of the moon, because it's in my nature, because it's against nature, because it's nasty, because it's fun, because it flies in the face of all that's normal, whatever that is, because I'm not normal, because I used to think that I was part of some vast experiment and that there was this implant in my penis that made me do these things and allowed them, wherever they were, to monitor my activities. Because I had to take my clothes off and lie inside this giant plastic bag so the doctors could collect my sweat. Because once upon a time I had such a high fever my parents had to strip me naked and wrap me in wet sheets to stop the convulsions. Because my parents loved me even more when I was suffering. Because I was born into a world of suffering. Because surrender is sweet because I'm attracted to it, because I'm addicted to it, because endorphins in the brain are like a natural kind of heroin, because I learned to take my medicine, because I was a big boy for taking it, because I can take it like a man, because as somebody once said, he's got more balls than I do, because it is an act of courage, because it does take guts, because I'm proud of it, because I can't climb mountains, because I'm terrible at sports, because no pain, no gain, because spare the rod and spoil the child, because you always hurt the one you love. So, I thought that was a pretty cool answer to Scotty's like, why, why, why would you do this? Why would you do this? I mean, it doesn't necessarily resonate with everybody, but I think it's a pretty honest assessment of like, sure, why he's into this shit. I mean, he really did try and think of everything he could that he felt contributed to him. Here's being every the he was. single yeah. possible yeah. conceivable right. thing that might have in it any was, way contributed. And really, there's no might about the way it. I am. It's more that all of this stuff is what it was. Yeah. It, right. it may not have been all and probably Morticia more Adams. than he thought. It, probably more than he could even imagine or think up. Too. Of course, I, it was definitely interesting to hear from his uh, the experience of his life and you know all these events and how you tie everything. I mean, because I mean, like that's what I, I was kind of getting at with you, TJ. I'm like, why do you think people do this? I mean, at least hear his answer. Was well, pretty fascinating, right. right? Well, I'm sure that you know if every person into any facet of BDSM wrote some kind of poem uh, in that same format, you'd hear just probably a ton a lot of, of crazy same. different but, shit. I, I but mean, you probably hear a lot of the same shit. You too. have to give yeah, him props definitely find because some commonalities most too. people don't live that openly about that lifestyle. And he was just like he was. He I, was I, more. I, he was open to the extreme. Yeah. He put it all out in front of people. It was part of yep. his performance art. Part of the artwork that he did was his body being tortured. So yeah. that was him. And one of the things that really resonated with me, he mentions it in that poem, but I, he also says it in the documentary that I talked about. Sick. He says that a lot of people have this misconception, and I did really too until I started looking into this episode. That it's the masochist that is the weak one in the relationship. And it's the sadist that's the strong, domineering presence and the one that's in control of that and doing the damage. And they're the hard person. But he said, really, especially as you get towards the extreme end of sadomasochism, it's definitely the sadist that is the brave person in that relationship. They have to endure all this shit. They have to put their body through hell. You mean the masochist? The, or sorry, the masochist. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sure. I get a little... Yeah. We've been sado and masochos. Sado masacho. Um, but no, like... No, the masochist is definitely the brave person in that relationship. They have to endure all that shit. Their body has to endure it. They have to heal through it. Plus, everything has to be through the filter of... I mean, like, it's very necessary that the masochist have uh, the power while the sadist has the illusion of the power. Right. Because the masochist has to be the one that sets what the limits are, you know? Right. If there are any. Um, so, so yeah. I mean, they I love that there part, has to be that. I love that part of Bob Flanagan's, like... Uh, sadomasochism is because one guy told me one time he had more balls than me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the thing that was fascinating that kind of tied it together is uh, 
He also had there was like a few feedery things in there too, like oh, yeah. about Porky Pig being uh, Trust tied up and, and force fed or yeah. something. And there was another thing about um, uh, Hansel from uh, Hansel and Gretel yep. being force fed. There's a lot of like little cannibalism references in modern culture, and they all kind of feed into oh, especially different in levels. fairy tales too. Oh yeah, well yeah, like fairy tales and like if you look at like there's some Disney shit, right? Yeah. Some of the like, what Disney movie is it that I'm thinking of that has like it, no nobody gets eaten, but there's like a real. I always thought there was kind of an element of that to fucking uh, the Lion King, honestly, which is because like, uh, you know, she's trying to at one point uh, Nala's trying to eat uh, Pumbaa and shit. Oh yeah, that's right. And it's like everybody's sentient and talking, yet there's still just like this wanton. I could eat like, you. You know, it'd be like if there's like you know, oh well, uh, those are Chinese people. They eat us sometimes. Right. You know, it's like you know we don't have to deal with that in our everyday lives. Right. Um, at least not most of us. I don't know. It, uh, it, it is kind of well, yeah. Uh, fair enough. I. Uh, I think it's interesting how we kind of like revert to those things. You see a lot of entertainment. It's like cannibalism is suddenly something that's explored, which in most of my, my, my day to day life, we don't, I don't explore the, the ideas behind cannibalism or what that would entail. And most people don't even talk about it. Like, you know, I don't think many of us are sitting around going, well, I want to eat somebody. Uh, well, maybe but then a you couple see that, of us are. Well, I mean, but you see that. Well, I, I know TJ is. TJ right now wants to eat all of us in this room. He's hungry. Well, I think TJ's more, he wants to be eaten. Yeah, he's just hungry. Or do you actually want to eat the other people? I'm going to eat you, Scotty. Oh yeah, that's right. TJ wants to be the the Christmas ham. I hope I'm tough, dude. He wants to be the special Tru- honey baked trust spiral cut boy. ham. Scotty, tougher than a two dollar steak. Tougher than a twenty dollar <laughs> steak. <laughs> no, but it, it it's was not bad. It was super interesting learning about this shit, and definitely could but have I mean, done like, a whole a lot episode. Of this, I mean, uh, I the, the a lot of the stuff like the cartoon shit, especially like talking about like oh shit imagery that I saw in like childhood cartoons. Mm-hmm. Like there's definitely elements of that in the Looney Tunes, especially. Yeah, I mean, there's always, always there's always kind of kind of fucked else. up shit about you know somebody getting. Um, yeah, there's just like a lot of fucking oh, dude, brutal uh-huh. shit Bugs, in there. Bugs Bunny's life was all, on, on the line all the time. Is going to be in or, da- or Daffy or whoever. But not only just eaten, but like Roadrunner. Think about all the violence just done to those characters. Like kidnapped. If they could have gotten away with CBT in those cartoons, they probably would have. They probably would have had a fucking scene of the fucking Roadrunner. Grabbing fucking uh, Wiley Coyote's dick and smashing a fucking boulder on it or something. I don't know, dude. I think Fritz Lang might have <laughs> drawn a few of those. Oh yeah, yeah. In his <laughs> off time, maybe he might have. He might Lost have a few footage kinky of, uh, Porky M. pigs. Well, yes, Porky. All right. Well, uh, that's feederism, and, and that cock and is cock and ball torture yeah. for your viewing pleasure and your. Trying pleasure, if you so choose. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah? We ain't gonna stop you. Before you go anywhere, if you aren't already coming to our meetup, Friday, September 6th, 2019, at the Howling Wolf in New Orleans, Louisiana. New Orleans, boy! Oh my, boy! Then oh what my. the fuck are you doing with your life? You have two options. You got a $20 option and a $60 option. $60 option is VIP. That means you get to come in like an hour early and chill with us in a smaller group setting. Free booze! <laughs> Wait, oh yeah, that's right. Free booze. For the VIPs, there's that's free true. booze. Uh, I mean, how do you turn that down? Free draft beer, but- free well. Ah. Gee, Willikers, Paul, I'm just, I just turned 18. I, I surely can't go, right? No, absolutely you can go. This is an 18-plus meetup, a highly requested wow. feature that I don't know that we've done many. Uh, Not 18 many. Plus. We've done a couple. So if you're uh, under the drinking age, you just got to get your I'm a Young Kid band on your fucking wrist, and you can come right in if you're 18 plus. Come on in. You can watch everybody else get drunk and hang out with a bunch of neck beards. And lest we forget... This is the time to become a patron. There's more shit on your plate as a Pessimist Productions patron now than at any time in the history. We are about to breach 5,000 patrons, which but means... But, Paul, I am a serial killer and murder people for a living. We don't Can give I a shit. Can I still become a patron? Absolutely. Your fucking money spins just as well as anybody else's. Wow. Uh, I'm so hungry for content, Paul. Is there lots of content to feast upon? Well, listen, you could go to the other meager offerings uh, on your plate and on Patreon, or you could come to the fucking buffet, the most fucking content you're going to get from $5 out of any independent creator. And if you if, if you, you want to call me wrong, 
I challenge you to show me somebody that works harder than these neck beards to fill your plate with juicy, heaping piles of steaming, cheesy, gravy-covered content week in and week out. In fact, I'll tell you, if we get one complaint from our patrons, it's no more. I can't eat another bite of steaming, delicious content. But you know what? We funnel it down their fucking throats oh, anyway. Oh, no, please, Paul. Not more content. Oh, you eat, eat it, bitch! Eat it, Come see us in September, September 6th at the Howlin' Wolf. Link down in the description. Become a patron right now. Link down in the description for that, too. Quit living a double life, okay? Come out to your families and friends as a true fucking fan of the best podcast that anyone has ever conceived of, let alone filmed and delivered on a fucking consistent schedule.